Hello everyone, Jimmy the Scottish Geek Guy here. Today I went to see Oppenheimer twice at the cinema. Why did I go and see it twice? Let's find out. Eight, seven, six, five. Unless you've been living under a rock these past few weeks, you'll be aware that there's a big movie out this weekend uh, and that big movie is Barbie. But as well as that, there is another big movie out called Oppenheimer. And it's in cinemas this weekend. What you may not be aware of is there's multiple different versions of Oppenheimer playing in cinemas for you to choose from, depending on where you are in the world and what your cinemas are offering in your area. A fair amount of the Oppenheimer um, press tour has been has been talking about how Oppenheimer was shot on IMAX film cameras. But what does that mean? And why should you care? Most movies these days are, are shot and projected uh, digitally. Um, some are shot with IMAX digital cameras and projected digitally onto IMAX screens. Um, some movies are shot on non-IMAX film and uh, converted to digital and edited digitally and then projected digitally. The unique thing about Oppenheimer is that not only was it shot on IMAX film, it's being projected in IMAX film at the uh, at the limited number of cinemas around the world that can project IMAX film. I think it's only 30 or so. Again, link in the description below about that. As well as IMAX film screenings, there are a uh, 70mm film screenings, there are digital IMAX screenings, um, various different flavours of IMAX as well. There's regular 35mm film projections and regular digital projections, DCP, digital cinema package projections. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the technical differences with them. I'll link to a video below that kind of goes into goes into great detail about that. Now, as I said, there's only 30, uh, 30 cinemas around the world that are showing Oppenheimer in IMAX film. Here in the UK, there's only three cinemas, I believe, one in Manchester and two Sorry, yeah, one in Manchester and two in London. I'm in Scotland, I'm up in Glasgow in Scotland, so I'm not really near any of those cinemas, so I didn't I didn't make that trip. Um, a fellow Scottish YouTuber, however, however, did make the trip to one of those, uh, and I think he's doing a video on it. I'll link to that below as well, if and when he puts that on YouTube. In my area, I have the choice of regular digital projection at, at, you know, at the various cinemas in Glasgow. Um, there's an IMAX Xenon, I think it's pronounced, a screen at the Glasgow Science Centre. I've, I've been to a few movies of that, or a good few movies in there over the years. I have a, an IMAX laser screen at Cineworld Silverburn in Glasgow. Uh, and there's also a 70mm film screenings at the GFT, the Glasgow Film Theatre. Uh, so those were those were my choices for, for what to watch. Um, I narrowed it down to two to compare the first one being the the 70 millimeter film screening at the gft and the second one being the the imax laser uh screening at silverburn cineworld i chose that one over the the, the science center at imax because mainly because i'm actually an unlimited member at cineworld so going there going to the imax screen there is only an extra four pounds for me so cost was a factor but as well as that IMAX laser is a, is a 4K projection, whereas the IMAX um, at the Science Center is, I think, the older uh, digital IMAX. Um, it's a 2K screen. I believe the one at the Glasgow Science Center is a tiny bit taller. Um, but yeah, I chose the uh, I chose the Cineworld Silverburn one for this uh, for this comparison video. Up first was the 11:20 a.m. showing at Cineworld Silverburn, um, Scotland's only IMAX laser, according to the banner inside. It's a nice, big, bright, crisp screen. The seats are fairly comfy, uh, and as long as you're not in the first five rows or so, um, and you're relatively, you know, not towards the sides, there isn't really, you know, bad bad seats. Obviously, with it being a massive IMAX screen. You're kind of going to be in the middle. At the middle, that's usually the kind of the the, the best um, uh, the best seat. In this screening, uh, I did notice that Oppenheimer had a shifting aspect ratio. I don't know specifically what it changed to, but there were scenes where it, it filled the whole IMAX screen at Silverburn Cineworld, and then scenes where it was cropped just a tiny bit top and bottom. Um, so it went from like you know it went from this to kind of this, and then back to this. And then back to this. It's it wasn't hugely noticeable, but you did notice it. It didn't it didn't detract from the movie at all. But 
it was it was there. It's maybe I think maybe the the scenes that are sixty five mil film next to seventy mil IMAX film. This screening was pretty visually stunning, I have to say. Um, it's a nice big screen. It's bright. It's crisp. Um, and it's not just for the not just for the big explosion scene. Spoiler: there's an explosion in this movie. The close-ups of people's faces when their face just like you know fills the frame. Um, it looks amazing. It kind of it reminded me of the end of The Dark Knight Rises when there's a shot of Batman's face as he's like in the bat wing, flying the bomb out to out to the bay, and there's a there's an extended a prolonged close up of his face that just fills that massive screen and it just kind of like you like it just draws you in. The uh, the sound system at the IMAX screen at Cineworld Silverburn is is very impressive as well. I don't know what the tech specs are. Um, I think it may be on on the picture I took of the banner. Um, but yeah, it, it always sounds amazing in there. The Whatever version of surround sound they have, it works very, very well. Um, it's loud, but not overbearing. And the sound design and the score, another brilliant score by Ludwig um, Goranson. Apologies if I'm butchering that name. It all comes together and, and it sounds amazing as well as looking amazing. All in all, it was a great experience at Cineworld Silverburn IMAX for the Oppenheimer IMAX laser screening. So as soon as that one finished, as soon as that 11.20 screening finished, I had to hop in the car and head into Glasgow City Centre to the GFT, to the Glasgow Film Theatre, for the 3.10pm showing um, of Oppenheimer in 70mm. So I had about 20 minutes to make an 18 minute car journey and then that two minutes to get parked run inside and and grab my tickets luckily you know there's the usual 15 20 minutes of trailer so i was there in plenty of time and i was sitting in screen one at the gft ready to go side note the gft isn't allocated seating so you collect your tickets from the box office and you just go in and you know it's first come first serve so i didn't get like a like a middle middle seat but it's not a massive screen at the gft and the way it's laid out there isn't really a bad seat i was actually third or fourth from the front and i was kind of like off to the side but yeah there's no there isn't really a bad seat in the gft whereas if i was in the third row at Sydney world imax i'd have a very sore neck right now as i said the screen here at the gft quite a bit smaller than the uh, than the screen at the silverburn Sydney world imax but it's not the size that's uh, that's that's important about the GFT. It's the experience. It's the feeling. It's the quality and the and the the kind of the the organic feeling of the seventy millimeter print. That's that's why people would choose to go there. I think. Um, I will say I did miss the size and and the expanded aspect ratio of of the IMAX screen. Um, and at times I did feel like I was I was seeing less. Uh, I suppose. Um, I mean, technically I was seeing less because, you know, I was seeing this instead of this. But there is something unique and special uh, about the 70mm print. The 70mm print screening, it's it's really high quality. I, I think when they compare 70mm to, to digital, it's to say something like 12k or 16k or something like that. Um, but yeah, but it's not it's not really about the, the pixels because there are no pixels. It's it's a, it's an analog process. It's a it's film being projected on a film projector onto a screen. So there's no there's no changing aspect ratio. The aspect ratio at the at the seventy millimeter print stays as it is for the for the whole for the whole screening. Something that something that did stand out when comparing both versions, comparing you know the the IMAX version with the the seventy mil version, was the the close up shots of of faces. Um, in the IMAX version, you're seeing it's a close-up of a face, but you're seeing more of the face. You're seeing like maybe from like chin or from the, you know from neck to 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 hairline or from neck to the top of the head. So you're seeing that much of of their face, and it fills the screen and it is immersive. But you do, I did find myself looking around that screen, looking at the left hand side of the face, the right hand side of the face, looking at the like the pores on their skin. So I was, my eyes did wander inquisitively. Whereas watching it, the 70 millimeter print, because that screening, because that aspect ratio is, is shorter, is, isn't as tall, it's like from, you know, from here to here, the close up of the face, I found that my eyes didn't wander at all. My eyes were locked on the character's eyes. And I wondered, uh, given the choice, what would Christopher Nolan prefer? Sound. Uh, 
No disrespect to the GFT, but the, the sound system at Cineworld Silverburn is better. It's more immersive. The surround sound feels more surroundy. Um, the, the sound system at the GFT did feel like, you know, the sound... I'm sure there is surround sound in there, but it did feel like it was more um, from the front. I suppose uh, it did feel a little bit inferior. Sorry, GFT. Still love you. Cost. There's obviously a cost difference between an IMAX screening and a 70mm uh, screening between a big chain cinema and a little art house cinema. Um, the GFT, the Glasgow Film Theatre, the 70mm screening there was a whopping £6.50, which in today's day and age is amazing. Um, it's great value for money. IMAX at Cineworld, however, was £16 or £16.60. Uh, for me, it wasn't actually that because I'm an unlimited member, so it was only something like a, like a four pound fifty add-on charge. But if you're not an unlimited member, it's sixteen, almost seventeen pounds. So IMAX at Cineworld is almost three times the cost of you know the the seventy mil screening at Art House Cinema GFT. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Um, Cost-wise, the GFT wins hands down. Which one would I recommend? Which version of Oppenheimer should you go and see? That's a tough one, to be honest. Um, obviously, if it's cost that's the main factor, then go to your local art house and go and see the 70mm print, if, if you can. Um, or the regular digital screening or the regular 35mm screening because they're going to be cheaper than IMAX. However, the IMAX screens, whether it's um, you know IMAX laser or IMAX xenon, those are big, bright, beautiful screens and the sound systems are, are equally um, bright. <laughs> uh, the sound systems are equally good as well. But there is something special about the about the art house cinema experience, about the about the 70mm print screening at the, at the Glasgow Film Theatre. There's a more organic kind of analogue textured feel to the screening as well as the overall experience of going to an art house cinema, picking up your tickets at the box office, uh, not going to a Starbucks because there isn't a Starbucks in there. It's just it's it's its own little cafe. Little things like that do add up to a to a different experience. Is it a better experience? No, it's not a worse experience, but it is a different experience. It's a different feeling. If you can, if you're lucky enough, I think the best option is to go to one of the one of the thirty cinemas around the world that's showing IMAX film because then you're getting the best of both worlds you're getting the huge IMAX screen but you're also getting the the kind of organic experience uh, of of film projection but as I said there's only there's only 30 of them around the world so that's not an option for many people quick shout out to the staff at the at the Glasgow Science Centre and the and the Glasgow Film Theatre for getting back to me with the technical specs of their screenings um, of their projections uh, projectors I'll put the info that they send me um, below in the comments. That was really helpful as well. I did reach out to Sydney World and they did get back to me very quickly, but it was their social media team that got back to me and they basically said, yeah, um, we don't know. We can't really get in touch with the people who would have those answers, so we can't tell you, but, you know, enjoy the movie. Um, and that's what I did. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I saw Oppenheimer twice today, back to back, once at IMAX Laser, once in a 70mm film projection, I enjoyed both experiences and I encourage you to go and see this movie in any way you can. That's it folks, if you want to see my review of Oppenheimer you can click here and I'll catch you on the next video.